Okay guys, in my previous video I experimented with some laser induced graphene where I use some Kapton tape and some dart laser. And in the video I make some small heater and some supercapacitor which have this interdigitated cell design. The supercapacitor and also the heater works really great but because the video was already almost 20 minutes long for this reason i decided that i will make another video on this topic because i want to make a little bit more experimentation with this laser induced graphene okay in this video i will make another supercapacitor based on this laser induced graphene but instead of using this interdigitated cell design like you see over here I will make a supercapacitor which have this, how to say, this sandwich-like cell design. Which means that on the bottom you have the anode, then the separator, electrolyte, and on the top will go the cathode. Which means that I will use some titanium foil, like I have over here, for the current collector, for the positive and also the negative current collector. And on these two current collectors, I will make this laser induced graphene, which means that I need to put the Kapton tape on these two current collectors, and then with the laser, I will decompose uh, the Kapton tape into some carbon mix material. First, what I will do, I will measure the weight of these two current collectors. So this one is almost half a gram, 0 0.49 gram, this one, 0 0.49 gram. Because later I want to know how much carbon I will have on each uh, current collector. And now I will put the captain tape on these two titanium current collectors Okay, this is good. Uh, now, if you remember from the last video, the settings for the power and the speed uh, was uh, the speed was set to 80 millimeters per second, and the power was set to 45 percent. Um, so, if I use these settings here on these electrodes, then the problem which I will get will be this layer of adhesive which will actually isolate uh, the carbon uh, from the current collector. And for this reason, the settings for these two electrodes, the speed will be the same, which is 80 millimeters per second, but I increase the power. So I increase the power from 45% to 80%, because in this case, I want to make sure that the adhesive will also burn. And actually, this is what I get. So because of the heat, the titanium pole also bent. But overall, 
I get some really nice carbon layer on this titanium current collector. And now I will also weight the electrodes. So the titanium current collectors, uh, before they have uh, 0.49 grams each. And now let's see what will be the weight with the carbon. 0.51 gram. So in this case I get 0.02 grams of carbon here on this uh, titanium. Let's check the another one. Zero point five grams. Which means that on here I have zero point zero one gram of carbon. And now I will put together the supercapacitor. Uh, so I will use the same electrolyte which I used in my previous video. So here I have uh, the electrolyte which is made from sulfuric acid and one mole of uh, sodium sulfate. And this filter paper I will use for the separator. Now I will charge the supercapacitor with the Rigol power supply. Okay, two minutes of charging will be enough. And first let's check the cell voltage. The cell voltage is in the region of 1.3 volts and falling. So I think that with this electrolyte the cell voltage will be around 1 volt. And because of this small cell voltage to run some small LED like this one, I will need this voltage booster. And yeah, so actually the capacity of this supercapacitor is not really huge. So again, I will charge for a couple of seconds. Okay, this will be enough. And that's it. One more time, I will charge for a couple of seconds. So the charging voltage is 3 volts and the current is 20 milliamps. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, I was also thinking that I will test the supercapacitor with the new war battery tester. Uh, actually, I will run a couple of cycles uh, to see what will be the performance of the capacitor. And just for comparison, I will also prepare this supercapacitor with this interdigitated cell design. So here I have some filter paper, which I will place here in the middle. I will use the same electrolyte, which is the combination of sulfuric acid and sodium sulfate. And for the current collectors, I will also use two strips of titanium. Okay, and on the top I will place another glass which will hold everything together. Okay, actually the LED is way more stronger here with this supercapacitor like by this. Um, and actually, yeah, this is because the surface area of this supercapacitor is also a little bit larger. Okay, now these two supercapacitors are connected to this new wire battery tester and the model of the tester is this TT4008 5V6A uh, S1. And now I will make 100 cycles with each cell. Okay guys, the cycle testing is over, but before I will show you the results, I need to point out that all these supercapacitors, uh, which I make in this video, uh, and they are made with this laser-induced graphene method, are for experimentation, uh, only to see what I can get out from some homemade device. I know that I can improve the designs even further, I can try different designs, but for now I have what I have. So in this video I try uh, to make uh, this laser induced graphene supercapacitor in this uh, sandwich like cell design which means that uh, the anode uh, is on the bottom, the cathode is on the top, um, right now here is the opposite uh, and uh, the electrodes are put together like in some sandwich form and I also try this interdigitated cell design, which also performs really, really well. Uh, and yeah, so the results which I get um, are, how to say, for this cell, I mean for this supercapacitor, um, I'm a little bit disappointed because I don't get the performance which I expect. And this is maybe because that his F was not burned 100% uh, and I still have some isolating layer between the carbon and the current collector. And now let's look into the results which I get with this supercapacitor. The discharge specific energy which is measured in milliwatt hours per gram is in the region of 0 0.02 milliwatt hours per gram. 
So at this state, I was expecting to get a little bit higher specific energy. Uh, but yeah, I get what I get. And the next supercapacitor, which I also test with uh, the newer battery tester, was this, which have this interdigitated cell design. That this shot specific energy was in the region of 5 to 4 uh, milliwatt hours per gram, which is also a little bit better. And for the finish, I also cycle the supercapacitor with this interdigitated cell design 1000 times. And this is the graph. And like you see over here, uh, so the specific energy of the device uh, goes down to around 3 to 2 milliwatt hours per gram. So guys, this was some extra experimentation with this laser-induced graphene supercapacitors. Uh, and yeah, so for now, that's it, and we see us in the next video. Like, share, subscribe, and bye.